All right, so something that I just read is that actually, and this is, this is pretty crazy, uh, it says here that logic, let me move this so you can kind of see, make this a little smaller, is actually coming to the iPad Pro. Now, this should have happened years ago when the iPad Pro first came out. I think this was a big reason why people were excited when the Pro first came out because you could use desktop apps this being one of the main, this and like Final Cut and all the like Photoshop, and you could use all these apps on the on the iPad Pro, right? I, the thing that gets me right here is that they're expecting people now to pay five ninety nine a month or forty nine dollars annually, and ha, being somebody who's owned Logic for now a couple of years, and I've and I've been trying to get better at it. You can see it down here in my taskbar. If it'll show up, there it is. You can see it right here, Logic Pro. I I think I paid like $150 or something, $200. And you know what? And it was like 400 bucks, so I can get the student package, which came with all of it. I already own it on my on my Mac. And I, and I think to then also get it on my iPad or whatever, I have to pay annually is kind of insane now fifty dollars is not too bad I, I say fifty it's technically forty nine this isn't too bad of a price this is actually a pretty oops this is actually a pretty low price for something that is in inevitably inevitably going to become one of the best uh daws on the ipad itself um i wonder if they're also going to set a student version that's a little bit cheaper and uh, that would that would be very nice. This is kind of disappointing. Whenever I first saw that they were coming out with it, I would be willing to pay like a hundred bucks just to get this thing. But if I'm paying basically a hundred bucks for two years, and it's also subject to change, which I read in the bottom, I don't know. But it says it comes with an all new creative interface made for touch. Uh, so I guess they're also going to update some of the actual pieces of the program itself. Maybe this that's why it took so long for it to come out. They actually had to go in and update some of the pieces so it made more sense. Because if they just ported the project direct from the Mac, it would not be a very good, not would not work very well. But it looks like they're trying to integrate. I mean, you can kind of see it over here. They're trying to integrate uh, things with the Apple Pencil. They're trying to integrate things for you to touch with your fingers. Um, it looks like they're making everything like very touch friendly, and it looks very nice. It, I mean, these, this is crazy. I, I mean, I, I, I don't know. This is this is super cool. GarageBand import. I mean, that's already that was already a thing. You could already do that. This uh, very exciting. Fresh sounds and endless inspiration. I mean, I guess they're going to import all the sound packs, which you could probably have already done if you already had a Logic on your iPad or on your uh, Mac. Wait, predictive. What does this say? Pre a predictive filtering system makes it easier to discover the perfect sound. What does that mean? Oh, for your loops. Okay, so they're going to have the browse. Yeah, that's just more loop stuff. Uh, you can search. So you can, they can predict, I guess, loops for you. Uh, play with pro plugins. So I guess they're also going to import all of the plugins that they have into uh, <clears throat> onto the iPad, which is pretty cool. Something that I am very excited for is, I, and this is something that I use on the uh, Mac version all the time, is actually being able to edit samples using the, uh, let me pull it up real quick so you can see it, but editing samples, I forgot what you, it's like you can chop them up and then you can uh, sample wave them, <sighs> let, me, let, me, let me pull it up so we can see, oh it's loading one of my songs that I made, um, make the beats top the charts, so I guess it's going to come with a sampler kind of thing. I guess that'll make it, I wonder, uh, I'm sure you'll be able to import them from the iPad to the to the Mac. But there'll be no reason if you can just do it all in here. Quick sampler. Yeah, see, they do it right here. Uh, where you can change the uh, the timings of, of pieces of an actual audio, like you can cut it up, which I think should have already been uh, transform audio samples. Yeah, so that should, I feel like there should be an app for that. I, if there isn't already, I've been looking for something like that for such a long time. Because the... Uh, Logic does it such such a good way. Uh, what you can do is, let's say you go to this, let's say you have this sample right here. 
And you, what you can do is you can turn on flex, so flex audio, I guess that's what it is. And you can literally change individual parts of the sample. I use this so much and it, it, you can like quantize it a little bit better and it lets you uh, change the uh, pitch, it lets you change the timing, it lets you change the velocity very, very easily and quickly and it's, I'm going to delete all these because I don't need them, but that is super exciting and I hope that, I hope that that's a big part of the app. I would be willing to pay, uh, <laughs> I don't know about five dollars a month, but maybe fifty dollars a year. Level up your mix, of course. There are already apps that do this, but it'll be nice to see what Apple adds. And it looks like it's going to be very similar to the to the uh, computer version of Logic, which is pretty cool. Pro Mixer, touch controls. So yeah, this will be fun. So you can actually automate stuff with touch. A big reason why I'm excited for this. I literally bought this, uh, the Touche SE so that I can basically try to emulate like a touch sensor on the uh, on Mac or on, for automations so that I can like really make it sound more natural. It looks like they're basically going to be adding something similar to the logic on the iPad and it'll, it'll, it'll uh, use the touch screen obviously as like a way to do that and that's, that'll be really interesting and I hope they add really cool unique ways to actually change the automation using your touch. I guess they have the person with the Apple Pencil sitting there writing it out or something, right? But I'm excited for that. That'll be that'll make instruments and stuff sound really interesting. Track stacks, I already do that on the on the Mac. Look at that. Yeah, so this will be really cool too. So you'll actually be able to um, send your audio file, send your logic files between each other. So if you have like if you're on the go, I guess it says uh, if you're on the road, <laughs> instead of bringing your whole laptop, which is kind of funny because I would, you just, I would bring the laptop instead of the iPad. But now I guess you, I, see, I, I can't really see very many people using this now. If I'm being honest, either you have the iPad or you have the the MacBook. You're not going to be like, mess, like switching between both of them. It'd make more sense if it was on the iPhone because it's like you know something in your pocket. So if you had a quick thing you wanted to quickly record and put in the, in your track or something, you could send it there. This I feel like is a little bit redundant. It's like you either do one or the other. It's not like you're really going to be doing both, especially especially with a laptop. You know what I mean? Tap into compatible third-party instruments and effects right So I guess they got AV AV three AV AUV five or whatever. Uh, that'll be crazy. I love that. Um, I think, and I'm going to take a guess here. I think that'll also mean that they'll eventually allow you to add some of these effects from the App Store onto Mac. I've tried doing that with uh, the App Store on, because I just bought an M1 Mac, an old one, so that I can test this out. It doesn't seem to work as well as I thought it would. But I want to be able to take some of these plugins that I've bought for myself on my iPad and use them in uh, in Logic. And it doesn't seem to be a thing yet, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see where this heads. Uh, studio hardware. I mean, I would hope so. You know what I mean? <laughs> If you, if you couldn't plug in stuff to it, then what's the point? Uh, Ableton Link. I've never used Ableton Link, but from everything I've heard, it's, it seems to work pretty well, and that's cool that they're integrating it. That's interesting that Ableton's a whole different software. It's funny that they're putting the Ableton Link into, into uh, Logic. That's crazy. Channel audio from different sources, such as software instruments. Okay, yeah, of course. I mean, uh, software instruments, are, you're going to want to be able to play this stuff. So, yeah, that's. I guess that's... Uh, that's what they're going to be doing. I gotta say, my favorite uh, feature is probably the five dollars a month or fifty, fifty-four, forty-nine dollars annually. Very cool. Uh, I might have to get it just to test it out whenever it does come out. It says it's coming out on the uh, five twenty-three. So I, that's what from the date of me actually filming. That's a couple of days. So it's, that'll be cool. I also like the idea of, of using the wireless uh, headphones as a way to studio mix. Uh, not going to work. I have i don't know what their idea is here, but they, maybe if they had the wire running into the iPad, but it doesn't look like they're doing that. Uh, yeah, that doesn't make sense. Anyway, uh, quite exciting. Hopefully this is better than I think it will be. Uh, hopefully it won't be redundant. Uh, and when it comes out, I'll have to test it as well.